In the previous lesson, you learned strategies for preparing for your interview. This lesson discusses tips to employ during your interview to keep calm and collected, to handle the occasional tough questions that an interview might present, and to foster a positive impression. Let's get started. Now that the interview is upon you, here are some key things to remember throughout. The first are actually strategies discussed in the cover letter module, but are also helpful for interviews. If you tend to get nervous during interviews, stop thinking about you, you, you. Ack, I blew that answer. Is my hair messed up? I hope they don't ask me that question. Turn the focus instead on meeting the employer's needs. After all, when they put out the job announcement, their hope was to find someone who could handle the position effectively, add to it, and be able to fit in with their work environment. Your task will be to show in a professional manner how you are that person and how you can help them meet their goals and aspirations. Neither undervalue nor overinflate your experience. For example, don't say, I was just a graduate assistant. At many universities, language GA positions are competitive and hard to get, and the GA is responsible for teaching, materials development, grading, and other duties. It is good to let your interviewers know briefly the range of the responsibilities you handle and the skills you have. At the same time, don't try to make it look like you were, say, a full-time salaried instructor if you were a GA working part-time. Stick to the facts. And if it's hard to talk about your achievements and successes, consider quoting your colleagues or students' words or impressions instead. In addition, here are some speaking tips. For question responses, find the happy medium in length. Concise and to the point is good in many cases, but being too brief in an interview can be counterproductive. Remember, the interviewers are trying to get a better picture of you and your experience. If you find they are continually asking follow-up questions to something they've already asked, it means that you may not have provided sufficient details. Make sure you are able to elaborate on your answers with relevant examples so that the interviewer can see what you might be like as an employee. At the same time, be careful not to overdo it i.e. telling your whole life story in answer to each question. The interviewers likely have a long list of questions to get through in a limited amount of time. So just give sufficient details for each question to enable the interviewers to properly evaluate your credentials. If you're being interviewed by a committee, make sure that you address all of the members while speaking and making eye contact with them. Please note that this recommendation is for the American context of job interviews and may not be appropriate in some cultures where different social protocols should be followed. As you are interviewed, be honest. Don't try to bluff answers or pretend to be someone you are not. Again, both you and the employer are trying to determine if you'd be a good match for the job as well as for each other and it will be difficult to make that estimation if they don't get a clear picture of who you are. Also, be flexible. It may turn out that the position might not be everything you had imagined when you learn all the specifics. You might find out that there are additional duties or responsibilities or situations you didn't know about, both good and bad. It's helpful to show that you can be flexible, especially for a job you really want. Being positive and cooperative can leave a good impression. Finally, it can be a good strategy to have a notepad handy during your interview to take notes. Make sure to ask your interviewer if it's okay first. Especially when you hear questions that may have multiple parts or may require an involved answer, you can jot down ideas or examples that you want to mention so you don't forget. Also, if the interviewer discusses particular information or points that you want to come back to later, for example, at the end of the interview, you can jot those down as well. 
Interviews are often fraught with nervousness and anxiety, and writing notes can help you remember and stay on track. Dealing with the tough spots. It is likely that you may be asked questions that you didn't anticipate. Don't panic. It is okay to pause if you need a moment to think about your response. Some buy a little extra time to think by using a short phrase like, that's a good question, or restating the question. If you need clarification or more details before you answer, ask for it. If it's a particularly difficult question and you feel you need more time to contemplate it, ask if you can come back to it again later in the interview. Perhaps by then you'll think of the response you want to give. Also, if you think you blew a response, do not let it get to you and ruin the rest of your interview. Again, keep focused on the way you can meet their needs while discussing your experiences and ideas and move on. If you feel you need to re-explain or elaborate on one of your previous responses, you might ask if you can do so after the main interview questioning is done. A question that sometimes pops up in interviews is, what would you say your weaknesses are? If this happens, choose something work-related, but not so serious as to disqualify you. A good strategy is to turn a negative into a positive by describing how you address the problem. For example, you may say, I am a terrible speller, so that's why I always use a spell checker and keep a dictionary handy. Or, sometimes I have problems with X, so to tackle it, I do Y. If they ask about a negative employment experience you've had, acknowledge the difficulty and say what you learned from it, or discuss the positive outcome of the situation. Bringing up salary considerations. As a rule of thumb, never discuss price before establishing value. In other words, until you've demonstrated and convinced them of how valuable you would be to them, and they have pretty much decided that you're their top choice, you should hold back on salary talk. Generally, you probably shouldn't bring it up in the initial interview, but instead in the subsequent part of the selection process, for example, when they make a job offer. If you really need to know the salary range for the job, you should investigate that during your initial information search, either by checking with the institution's human resources department or public databases, for example, state employee salaries for state universities. Finally, as the interview comes to a close, end things on a positive note. Make sure to reiterate your interest in the position and thank them for their time and consideration. An extra nice touch is to follow up afterwards with a thank you letter or email. Hopefully your interview goes well and you are a main contender for the job. Good luck. Next up, test what you've learned in the think section. Check out the dig deeper resources for even more strategies and tips. In the discuss section, respond to the following prompt. What would you say is the greatest challenge or difficulty you face when being interviewed? What strategies do you employ to try to overcome them? Thanks for joining us.